Yes. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make trance music in the style of Genix, Elan Bluestone and Above and Beyond. Now, out of all my in the style of videos that I've been publishing over the past few weeks and months, this is one of the ones that's had the most requests from you guys. We will be covering sound selection and sound design. We will create this huge chord progression. We'll also be going into percussion, arpeggio, pads, vocals, and even mixing and a bit of arrangement and a huge build up. I'm going to be using Ableton Live 10, but as usual, you can follow along in any door, so FL Studio, Logic X. And if you do use Ableton Live 10, you can download all the project files below this, including the samples and the presets. As always, if you dig this video, give it a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, I've got my head switched on, let's do this. First thing I'm gonna do is select a tempo. I'm gonna select 130 BPM because that's the kind of tempo that Anjuna Beats Trance is. Then I'm gonna name it and because it's trance, I'm gonna call it Trance Sexual. Jesus. Right, that's the name, let's do this. First thing we need is a big fat kick drum because you always need a big fat kick drum. So I'm gonna do this in audio, but you can do it in MIDI as well but I'm just gonna do it in audio because then you've got a bit more control over the shape of the wave. So let's go into some of my samples. Da -da -da. I'm going to go to something nice and punchy because um, this style is like really big, really loud. So we're gonna push this quite hard as well. So I'm just gonna trim it so it's only playing for half a beat. Quickly duplicate that. There's our kick drum. Gonna turn it down um, 10 dB just to make sure that we don't have any clipping on the master channel. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, work out the chords because that's gonna inform what the bass line's gonna be. So I'm gonna just kind of jam some in with a simple synth. I'll use the analog, saw wave, da 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 da, and I'll show you how you can program it in if you don't have any music theory skills as well. And I'm going to do this in A minor because it's just easiest key to write in. Um, so let's just jam some. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. So lovely lush seventh chords. That's kind of in the style of this big, lovely heart melting trance. So let's put chords in. Right. So if we are going to be doing, I'm just gonna open that so I can stick my face in there. Um, if we are going to be writing chords in A minor, if we write in all the notes first of A minor, like so, so just all the white notes from A up till A, that is the key of A minor, nice and simple. And if we hold Alt and duplicate it down an octave and also up an octave in Ableton, then you can press Fold and you've got three octaves of the lovely, the beautiful A minor. So I'm just gonna use this template basically. And first I'll draw in the bass notes. Oops. Okay, select them all, push them one step to the left so they're outside of the clip and we can't hear them play. So I'm just, you can see I'm just using these notes that are in A minor and it's all white notes, so you can't really go wrong. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Cool, now let's build the chords on top of that. And all we need to do is duplicate and skip a note each time. And seventh chords, is when you add the seventh note in the scale, and that's gonna give you that lovely heart meltery sound. Except I'm gonna just hold shift, stick them all up an octave as well, um, which means I'm gonna have to make another octave template, just to make it easy to Nice noise. So now we've got four octaves of A minor natural.
Cool, so let's just do that. And you can see my template technique makes it super easy. And I'm just gonna continue to use that technique, but add some extra notes in as well, just to make it even bigger. go then. So we're making these really big super sore stack of chords. So it's going to be like a wall of sound when it drops. And I'm just going to copy and duplicate that and then we're going to make a slight change at the end of the second time through just to make it a bit more interesting. Cool, so I'm just going to take this down and now let's quickly make this into a bigger sound. So I'm just going to root the oscillators da, 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 like this. So each one's got their own filter, each one's got their own amplitude. Um, and more importantly, each one's got its own pan. So I'm just going to make sure that it's fully sustained, no release. So it's really amp, stab on and stab off. And then I'm going to... Um, I have to make sure that's the same for the second oscillator. Like this. And you can detune them slightly now and then pan them left and right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press group, open this, duplicate that with command and D. So I'm going to have one that's detuned and one that's not, but the detuned one I'm going to change the wave just to give it some more texture. So you can hear how big it's sounding already. And I'm gonna add a noise oscillator to give it some hiss. And I only want the detune one panned. But we've got some clipping here, you can see. So I'm just going to turn them both down a bit. And now we're going to add some extra sizzle to it with this amplifier. Now let's add some reverb and make it really big. And we're gonna make this pump as well, so it's got that Anjuna Beats kind of vibe. So you can already hear it's getting huge. Right, so for the pump, you can see I've got a reverb, I've just boosted up the gain a bit, and I've got an EQ to take out the low end. So let's make this pump by using a compressor. Then I'm going to take the side chain from my side, the input, sorry, from my side chain channel, which is just here. It's a, a little tick drum that you can't hear because if you open up the routing, 
I've got it sent to sends only instead of master. So you never actually hear that. It just triggers the sidechain compressor. But now we can make our um, reverb pump. And we can just copy this. Uh, I'll just call it pump compressor so we know what it is. Um, and then I can copy that to pretty much any element I want to pump and duck, which is pretty much every element in this kind of music. So I could put it to my chords itself. Cool, so that's going to be our big kind of drop thing. Next we want the bass and I'm going to do the bass, I'm going to start the bass with a saw wave as well. So there's lots of synth work in this lesson, um, but that's good because everyone loves synths, it's good for you. In fact I'm going to start doing a synth rhythm on the um, root note of the track, which is A just with the kick, because there'll be different sections in the track. There'll be like the main um, chord section, and then there'll be just keeping on one note, which would be like at the beginning of the track and the end of the track. Cool, so we can program that in, or sorry, play it in. And now I'm just going to go in, select it all, quantize it up nice and tight. Make sure they're all the, whoops, same length. And now let's make this into a goddamn bass. Bass! So the way I'm going to do that, again, I'm going to go to the amplitude and I'm going to make sure, in fact, I'll split, uh, um, yeah, I'll do what I did before. So I'll route them both to their own frequency and amplitude. Zero release, full sustain, zero release, full sustain. And now let's make that actually a bass. So I'm just going to grab it, drop it as an octave. And drop one of the oscillators an octave. And I'll just copy that bass line and then consolidate it. And we're going to make a sub bass as well. So I'm just going to duplicate that whole track, Command and D. And then for the sub bass, I'm going to load in a lovely, simple, wimple little operator and then use the um, sine wave. Maybe drop in an octave. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to bring the low end energy to this bass. So for this top bass, I might actually equalize out some of the sub frequencies so it doesn't clash with the sub bass. Now that sounds really weak, but we are going to make that a lovely, big, thick, fat and Juna beats bass, baby. So let's, um, again, we're going to group it, duplicate that, and we're going to use much the same technique that we used for the um, for the chords. So first let's just sort out this first oscillator. We kind of had alre have already, so for the second one we're going to detune a couple of them. And we might actually put some um, semitones. So it plays a harmony, which is quite cool. But I'm going to choose a different uh, oscillator square and I'll pan them left and right and then I'm going to detune them slightly as well. And we want to make that lovely and fat again. So remember, this is just the sub bass is staying clean, but this top bass or the mid bass, I'm going to add some uh, distortion to it. I might use the erosion. Or 
or the overdrive. And I'm going to group those bases together. Control and G, call that base, and just color it like a dark, darker color so I can see what's what. And I'm going to stick the pump compressor on that as well. Now to make that bass more interesting, we are going to add a bass reverb and it's just on the auxiliary channel, same chain as before, um, but I've just got control over it as a separate reverb because it's just for the bass. So let's dial some of that in. Just to the top bass, not the sub bass. Don't want sub bass reverb, no way. Okay, so it's uh, clipping there. So what I'm gonna do is just bring down both of these channels within the group. It needs more sub bass. Cool, and we can also add another one of those pump compressors to the Bass reverb, it'll give it that lovely sucking um, effect. Okay, that will do for the bass. Right, next what we have got is the all important drums. Really like driving drums. So we're gonna just create a drum channel and I'm gonna use the drum rack for this just because I like using the drum rack. Um, and then I am going to... Uh, first, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra knock on a couple of those bass things. So, so I'll be augmenting the bass, if you will, with a bit of a tom drum. So I'll just call this drums. And now let's find a nice tom drum. So where are we gonna go for that? We'll go into my sample packs, drum hits. Here we go. Make that a bit smaller. Um... Where might that be? Congos, bongos, toms, here we go. That's quite cool. So I'm just gonna make that so it's got zero sustain. And now I'm just gonna put this exactly on the same notes as these, at uh, the same place as these bass thingies. So it just gives the bass things a bit more power. Cool, okay. Now the all important big fat snare, like that Phaeton proper Anjuna beats, dish snare. Um, now where, I don't know, where am I gonna get a snare from? That's quite nasty, let's use that. Nasty's good, we like nasty. Has to be really like high endy and loud. It might not be the right snare. Or we might want to layer another one over the top. Because they're quite big sounding snare and clap in these tracks. So let's just layer another one and then we're going to scroll through some and audition them as we go to find one that just kind of sits well with the frequency range. So that gives it some low end. So if we turn this off without this on, let's turn off the tom and with this new snare as well. I'm just gonna take off some of the tail by just shortening the sample. 
Same on this one. So then we can add some reverb by doing this, pressing R, and then create, right click, create return chain, route it to our room reverb, and now we can dial in some of that room reverb just here within the drum rack. This is why I love drum rack. And then I'll go to the room reverb, make it a bit shorter. Cool, okay, now we need an open hat to go in between. This uh, bass, I think, needs a bit more shaping, actually. I'm going to add an amp to it. Just a bit bigger. Right, let's get a an open hat in there. Righty, righty, righty. Drum hits. And I'm just going to program one in and then scroll through some of those drums. Look at the lovely way I've got my samples organized. Let's see. Just program them in. And I'm going to make sure they're programmed in with um zero release so the sound stops as soon as the midi note finishes that sounds pretty good actually i'll just take out some of the low end voices one though it doesn't really matter i'm going to use a filter to take out the low end high pass filter bit long Cool, that will do for now. We'll have a big kind of beat at the end. In fact, I'll stick that in now. I'm gonna find a big snare. Let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the Hyperbits sample pack for this. It's completely free. You can check it out over on his website, Hyperbits. It's a wicked little sample pack. I think he's got two actually. Um, so let's find the big room snares. That's pretty cool. So we're just going to put that in and that's going to play on the last snare of each beat, like so. Too loud though, obviously. You might even want to add some kind of shuffle in there you know, when, when the hi-hats are all coming in. Uh, you could choose a beat. Actually, I'm going to program it in because it's good for you to learn how to do these things right. Uh, closed hats. I can't wait to get to the blimming big breakdowns. I'm just going to lose my shit. All right, that'll do. Let's just program in some 16th hats for when the rhythm really gets going. Whoops, they're on eighths, we need them on the sixteenths. Let's duplicate. I'll choose a different sound, uh, like that. So I press this hot swap button. Just wait until I find one that kind of sits in the right frequency. That sounds pretty cool. So I'm just gonna actually alternate the uh, velocity a bit on those just to make them a bit more human. 
and then I'm going to duplicate that instead. I'll take out the low end on these as well, just using the filter in the sampler or the simpler. Don't forget you can download this project completely free. If you're digging it so far, give me a hell yeah brother or an amen and I will absolutely love you forever. Right, I'm going to actually transpose this up to give it this frequency I want. Use a filter, take out the low end. Add some room reverb. So it all gels together. Cool, okay, now we are going to add a bit of arpeggio. Should we add the arpeggio? Yes, we will. Right, so for the arpeggio, we want something in the key of A minor as well. So I'll just put arp in and, or arp, as you are well aware, that is definitely a word. So if we go and check this out, I'll we'll put arp and color it cyan. And I'm just gonna use a simple synth to write it so I don't get confused with all the sound design. And then I'm gonna choose a different preset so it sounds nicer. And yeah, so if we use that template that we drew before, if you want to, if you, want to um, you can do that. So just draw in all the white notes for A minor and, and do that, but I'm just gonna quickly do it in. Quite like that. So I'll just draw that in. And you'll notice that all the notes I'm using are in the key of A minor natural. But it needs to be twice as fast as that. So we'll just do that, make them. And then just duplicate it. And now I'm going to choose a better sound. So I'm going to go into um, synth leads, maybe. That's probably not the best um, thing. Maybe synth keys. That sounds like it could be quite a nice plucky, plucky sound. Oh, yeah. I'll turn the reverb and the echo off, though. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I want to have the global reverb and delays on there. So I've got more control over it. I might take that up an octave though. Shift and up. Take out that clicky clicky low end with an EQ. So this is our arpeggio, add some hall reverb. And then have a auto filter on there so we can take it down. I might duplicate that actually, I'm gonna Layer the arps, so I'll group them together. Call it arp, arp. Yeah, you can you can have two A's because you're you've been good today. You deserve two A's, right? And I'm just going to have the auto filter on the group, not the whole thing. And then let's choose a second sound for this arpeggio, the layer. I'll just turn off the EQ for a second. Right, and turn off those effects as well. So let's go back to our. Synths, I'm going to go back to percussive. Let's see what they've got here. Nah, percussive's not what we need. Synth rhythmic. That's cool. Oh, yeah. So I'll load that in. And it's another chain. Let's see what's, what's going on there. 
There we go. It's got an arpeggiator in the chain. Um, oh, I like that. That's awesome. Should have just picked that at first. Uh. So layered, what's it sound like? Uh, really nice. Let's have a quick listen to that. I'm going to add a pump compressor as well, sidechain compressor. Right, now we're going to add a pad for a bit of extra kind of layers and a bit more atmosphere. And the way I'm going to do that is by, I'm actually going to do this with a sampler, just to show you a different technique. Um, so I'll just load up the simpler into there. I'll have to change it to sampler anyway in a minute. And I'm just going to go to my pad sounds. Like these are really old samples, some of these, like pads. Um, so they're not the best quality, but it doesn't really matter because you can just, um, you know, fiddle around with them. But we don't want a chord. We just want one note. Like so. So if we change that to a sampler, we can then press loop mode, um, ping pong, and then we can it can be sustained for as long as we hold it and then crossfade so it's a nice smooth. So that's our pad that we're going to start with. And I'm just going to hold one chord because this is like when the bass is on one note anyway. This one might actually clash with the arpeggio a bit, so we might change the sound. But that's the chord that we're going to hit, just a normal seventh chord. Um, I'll have to make sure that we can play more than one at once. Where is that? Filter global, voices, eight. we're going to play that. And they're all notes within the key of A minor as well. All white notes. It's a bit harsh though. Um, let's see if there's enough. That's probably going to be better. So let's change it to that sound. Where is it? Soft pads. Uh, where was it? Soft pad two. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of chord in that one. But it gives it a kind of mad um, discordant sound, which I quite like. Lots of textures. So this is a cool trick I'm going to show you with the EQ8. If you go into the, um, what's it called, presets, you can choose uh, vocal A, because we know it's in the key of A. So if we choose this, check out what happens. It makes a pretty cool like formant filter. And then I'm just going to put a normal EQ8 after that to take out any unwanted frequencies. That's just water in the way. We're playing it right up here. And this is going to be quite a um, subtle pad. And then we're going to add a flanger to it, I think, or actually I think a phaser might be better. So you go to special effects, phaser. I'll do this before the vocals. I might have to compress this a bit because it's hitting some resonant peaks. Um, So this is just going to smooth it out a bit. You can see it's kind of wobbling around a bit. So this compressor is just evening out the sound. So let's play it underneath. That's off and on. Full reverb. That's a really nice sound, actually. Kind of like aliens singing to me in beautiful harmony. Thanks, aliens.
Thalians. Okay, let's name that alien. Let's call it Thalians to thank the aliens. And then we're going to just draw those notes in. And that pumping is coming from the hall reverb. So with no reverb, it's like that with reverb. And we'll probably add some pump reverb on the dry pad itself, like so. You can dial in different amounts if you want with dry wet. I actually want one extra bass sound coming in. This is going to be crazy. No, I won't duplicate it. In fact, I'll just create a new bass sound. Um, I'm going to do it in audio, and it's just going to be one bass hit at the beginning of every bar, just to really like nail it home. So I'm just going to listen to some samples. It's all about layering this genre. It's not all about layering, but it's largely about layering. Um, Let's see. That's quite cool. So I'm just going to play this on the first note and I'm going to pitch it down because this is in C and I need it to be on A because that's the first note. So I need to pitch this down. So let's just notch down the tempo, warp it. I probably don't have to warp it. And this should give some extra depth to the bass just on that first hit. And I could actually use a, let's see, one of these free little bad boys. It would be the Ozone Imager 2 to spread it out a bit. It, we might run into phase issues, so we'll have to check that. Seems okay, but we don't really need the, the sub frequencies anyway, because the sub bass is handling that. So it's just really the extra texture. I quite like that sub bass in there as well, actually. Just give it a big hit on that first. Absolute Beautosaurus Rex. Right, let's get that down and just do a bit of shaping on these chords because they're a bit like, you know. We could even use one of these. Um, ozone images on the whole chord thing and kind of spread them out a bit. Making sure they work in mono. So I've got this mono switch on my master channel just to check in mono. Yeah, I accept. So this is going to be part of that big wall of sound. So what's going to happen on the drop, which is what we're going to do now, don't worry, we're going to get some vocals as well shortly, but on the drop, obviously the bass notes are going to have to change because the chords are changing. 
So the tune starts off like this. But um, let's take it over to the main drop, which could be here. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to turn off both basses apart from the main one, and then I'll follow these exact notes here, because these are our bass notes. And we just need to make sure our bass notes are hitting those too. To the same pattern. Uh, whoops, it's this bass, isn't it? Right, let's just duplicate that. And now we can just drag that down to the sub bass as well. It's gonna hit the same note. Is that an octave too low? No, it's an octave too right. That's heavy, man. Maybe a bit less noise on the uh, chords. They're a bit still. Cool, now we just need to make sure these first bass notes are also changing where we need them to. This is gonna be a bit harder because we're just, we, we don't have MIDI because it's an audio sample. So we're just gonna to have to do it by ear. You could work it out with the transpose thing. Ah, oh, that's too long, it should be stopping there. Do, do. That means it's gonna be doing it. Oh no, how strange. Oh, I know, it's because I didn't put warp on. This is difficult like this. Let's see. I'm gonna warp this. Let's put it up. In fact, I'm going to do this an octave up to make sure that I'm actually hitting the right note. First, I'm going to warp it. Complex Pro. That just sounds like some hideous nightmare. Okay, but it's in the right key. Nightmare key. Um, if we press 29, in fact, we can just hold transpose, uh, click it, hold shift, and then press down, and it's gonna take us down octave by octave. Beat sounds better. And let's test this one, make sure it's on the right, right uh, note. Yeah, it is. Okay, so, nightmare mode, let's do it. Um, in fact, the, what did I just duplicate? I'm going to save that and then we're going to throw the kick and the sidechain track on there. So it's all pumping. In fact, I think on this um, drop, the bass would actually be um, a more repetitive rhythm just to give it more drive. So what I'm gonna do is this. Don't worry, this won't take me long. 
we're just gonna go repeat, repeaty, repeaty, repeaty for the same, making sure that they stop where the gaps in the chord stop. Right. Like this. Da, 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 da. Let's turn off the side chain compressor. Just delete it. Yeah. Let's make them half as long actually. Might sound better, give it give it more rhythm. So you can see where there's a gap in the chords, I don't have it at bass note play. Now let's just have them the length they were before. Like so. So that's all we're doing. And that's so they match the chords. So we'll just copy that, paste it, and then duplicate that to our sub bass. Boom, 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 I want you in my room. Oh no, sorry, I did a Venga boys. the difference in side chain mate. Right now we need some big cymbal crashes. Cymbal. And this is because you want that big wall of sound effect. So let's go to samples, let's choose the cymbals, duh, 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 duh. drum hits and cymbal splashes. That sounds pretty cool. I'm going to just draw these in so again I've got more control over them. Like so. So this is on the main drop. I'm just going to take out some of the low end. We just want the sizzle really. Like that and we're going to have this on every single kick. And we might even add a bit of side chain compression to them, just so it's just the tail that you hear. Like that. I don't like the second bass for the drop, so we'll leave that for the normal bit. Okay, now we need a melody, so let's do that. And then we're gonna get a vocal, which is gonna sound amazing. So the melody, I'm gonna just have something that you could kind of sing along to in that style. So let's get a wavetable again. Ooh, ow. Let's use Boulder Blaster. 
Again, this is going to be in just A minor. Lots of low end buzz there. It's like a horrible sound, but we're gonna we're gonna layer it. So the first thing is to get the melody in. I'm just kind of jamming and waiting till I find something I like. I like that bit, so let's just kind of record that. Nice playing, Will. Well done, mate. All right, let's uh, let's just draw it in, eh? I'm going to make sure they overlap so you hear the glide in between them. And I'm making sure this works in, um, you know, it works with the stab and the bass in terms of the rhythm. Could be a bit cheesy, but you can see there's a space there where there's a space in the chords. And it's good to start off with the second part of the melody by repeating the first. Keep some people's head. That's the bit I was playing earlier that I liked. Whoops. That's it. So we're just going to repeat that and then we'll change the second half of that at the end just to kind of make it like a, a, a full melody phrase, like so. And I'll, I'll leave the first note of the second bit. It, it does run the risk of getting a bit cheesy here. I did it. It went cheesy. Right, let's quickly duplicate this and then we're going to choose another layer. And again, it's all about layering and making a really big wall of sound. So let's go to my synths again. And you know, I could do this with samples as well, layering up samples, but time is of the essence. So I'm just going to group those. Right, okay, now let's colour those. 
probably want some um, lower frequencies in there. So I might choose one of the oscillators in the wavetable and drop it down. And then I'm going to process them together with a pump compressor, like so. Put some nice full reverb on. Some saturation or some overdrive distortion on the group. Okay, now we need a vocal. So what I'm gonna do is go to Trusty Old Splice and I'm gonna just search for a vocal in the key of A minor natural. And I want a male vocal for this, for that Anjuna Beats kind of sound. So let's go to vocals. I'll turn off the melody for the time being. And where's my splice? Splice, 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 here we go. So here we can go, here we go. Vocal, funny that. Male, A minor. And now let's have a listen and see what there is that works with this. Whoops, let's just get that out of the way so we can search. I want you. Uh... So let's get that vocal in there. That is a proper like heart melter. Right, let's see. Recently added. We're gonna do this proper 140. So I'll turn off warp, turn it on again. Make sure it's a 140 because it tells us here in the clip that that's the um, tempo that these were recorded at. Complex Pro because it's the nicest for vocals. Dun dun these patterns. That last note is dodgy. It's an accidental, but we don't want an accidental. It's no accident. So what I'm gonna do is just split it there and then just tweak it down with the transpose till it's the right note. And then just blend them together. Yes. Yes! Like ideally I'd find another vocal for the second part of that phrase because otherwise it's going to get a bit repetitive but time is of the essence so let's just kind of do it like this. Let's 
let's just change the notes of the last uh, of the last bit. We're going to change these manually. That's cool. It's a bit um, kind of EDM vocal choppy, but um, at least we're kind of making it do what we want. God, I sound like a bloody totalitarian dictator. Of vocals, that is. I'm just going to stretch this last one out. Um, like so. And fade it. Nah. Like so. That's pretty cool. Right, so that's our vocal hook. Now let's quickly do a bit of arrangement. So we are going to have this as a build up, and the build up would be something along the lines of Thalians coming back to play. And now we're going to have some um, arpeggio automation with the auto filter like this. And this is going to be our big build. Like so. It would probably be twice this length, actually, for this genre of music. So let's just copy and paste all that. Binis, like so. And, whoops, automate. Check out my video from the other day if you want to learn about automation. So this would be the big Anjuna Beats build-up, and it would go something along the lines of this. It's not perfect, but you get the eyes. And then the beats come in. And the melody could be filtering in there as well, like so. That last bit's too cheesy. So this is where your big kind of build-up snares have come in. I'll do a bit more work on this before I give it to you because I'm kind of running out of time here, but hopefully you've got an idea about how to make this kind of music. Um, and then it's, you know, more time doing this basically. Careful with layering. You know, so something along the lines of this. Let's take it down a bit. Big riser. And then taking stuff like the bass out and the, take the volume down before the big drop, maybe a big snare just before the drop, like here. Let's get that back in.
then after you've looped through that a couple of times, you bring in all the drums as well, like this. And then onwards you go, and you'd probably turn off the cymbals and, uh, maybe not actually, make sure the bass is still the same. And then you could bring in those sweet, sweet vocals, like so. <laughs> And then you might do a bit of bus processing, group the kick and the bass together, add a little bit of saturation to boost their frequencies up a bit. You can hear now the drums need to come up a bit as well, but that's fine, you can do that. You know, it could be that everything's getting a bit loud now, so let's look at the master channel. Yeah, it's all, all distorted. So what we do in that case is turn everything off, get rid of it all, don't like any of it, um, and then we'd start mixing again. Um, you can leave the, uh, the stuff within each group at the levels they are, that's fine. And then just take down the groups. So we're going to start with the kick and the bass. Make sure we've got plenty of headroom. then bring the chords in. You can hear how loud they were. And just turn your monitoring up if you need to at this point. Arpeggio, yes please. And then the vocals, because they're super important. could even add some, let's see, a bit of compression to the vocals, just to gel them together a bit more. Um, so this is what the track would start out like. And with the lovely pad. So it's definitely worth going back to the beginning if your levels end up creeping up too high. So you've got lots of headroom. Too much reverb. But you know, these chords could be fed in slowly at the beginning of the track, so you could... I mean, I could keep going really, so I'm not going to, but you get the idea. So, if we were to bring in the change of bass here, stick it there, like so. Now let's listen what happens if you were to bring those chords in, but filter them in slowly. You'll, what you'll find is that your heart probably will melt. Um, but that's a risk I'm willing to take today. So let's do that. Let's just feed those vocals in. Sorry, the chords. Come on! Break. 
obviously the brake would be more extended than this with all of that good stuff. And then the build up. I'll do more work on this, then you can take it. Ooh, pitch bend on the snares. You get the idea. Thank you for watching. Please, please share, subscribe, download this if you want to. It's hopefully going to help you so you can pick apart the all of the good stuff. And now I'm going to leave you for the weekend. Adieu. So there you have it guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to download the project file and all the samples for free. Give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and until next time, cheers and happy producing. Oh, 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 oh,